This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this uh, Intec Rover Soul uh, Dusk, it's called. The model is the Dusk. Okay, now this, um, this also has an off the grid package in it. So uh, I'll get into that a, a little bit and we can talk to you about it in person when you're, when you're, after you've watched the video and we're, you're going through it. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll do that, but this is not a floor plan video or, or a sales video, it's just a how-to video, okay? So right here, off door side, or door side rear, I'm sorry, you have this quick connect for the LP fitting. Your griddle here connects to the, to the, uh, that fitting. So you can see back here, you have this clips on here and there's the the quick connect for the male side of the of the fitting which connects excuse me right in here so that's how you get gas to your griddle LP gas all right also this this has a uh, a cooler this runs on 12 volts um, you can remove it if you want and set it elsewhere it's up to you um, and it's strapped in place right now, but you can see it opens up and your controls are all right here. If you look in the next compartment, uh, this is just a dump hose here. This is your a cover for the, this one I believe is for the front. Uh, you have a, a uh, pole for your awning, a crank for your awning I should say. Uh, this is a 30 to 20 amp adapter for your shore cord. You get a water hose with it okay and a uh, three-quarter inch crank for the stabilizers you can see your uh, awning up here you have some power here um, so your two LP tanks are behind this cover here you pull each one of these out there's one on each side remove the the cover and, your, and there's two tanks they're both full right now um, but that's where you access them uh, this rest this here is for storage of course you have a power tongue jack so uh, it has a hitch light on it plus you can go up and down with it now if this it was to ever fail um, for any reason you can't get hitched and unhitched you can just pull this plug off the top and there's a three-quarter inch hex in there you can use the crank for the stabilizers um, that I just showed you you could use that or you can use uh, a three-quarter inch socket and a ratchet or a, a electric or a battery power drill whatever the bottom line is you can still operate this manually if you have to in an emergency okay the battery like I said is inside it's under it's under the seat along this wall I'll show you that when we get inside your your storage for your dump hose is right here your tank um, dump is right here <coughs> excuse me that's your furnace vent your 30 amp 30 foot shore power cord this is just cable satellite or or internet or, uh, or I'm sorry um, cable through this covers up your your city water hookup right here city work water hookup is the most common way to get water to the trailer now if you're camping someplace without city water, if you're boondocking or whatever, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. You unscrew this cap, fill this, fill the fresh water tank here, then you can use the onboard pump to pump the water when you get where you're going. I'll show you the, where the pump is and everything, the switch for the pump is. So um, if, you, if you have city water, all you can do is hook the hose on here and you're all set. If you're, if you're going to be camping someplace without city water, you pre-fill your fresh water tank and pump the water. Okay. Now this has on-demand water, which is a great thing. Uh, this is your on-demand water heater right here. Two things you should know here. This is the master switch right here. Right now it's on, of course. It's just a, it's just a, a toggle switch, or a, a rocker switch, I'm sorry. Um, and then you have a fuse behind here, but that will, that'll never blow. It's good to know it's there, but it's not something you should worry about. Now, right here, it's very difficult to see, but right back here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a a uh, button, a black button that's between those two blue 
uh, connectors there. That's a kill switch also. It's good to know that it's there if it throws code number three ever. Uh, odds are you'll just push that and it'll reset it, okay? It's, it's something that you rarely will have to do, if ever, but it's good to know that it's there, okay? We'll talk more about this when we get inside. Okay, so it's prepped for a, uh, pre-wired for a backup camera, okay? You want to inspect your trailer and your roof on a regular basis. You know, the manufacturer says every 90 days, I believe. Figure a few times a summer. Any place you see caulk from the factory, on the roof, on the sides, you want to inspect it. If you see any cracking or separation ever, you're going to uh, clean it off with a proper uh, uh, solvent, and you're going to uh, use the correct uh, sealant. In this case, it, it would be most pit places would have a uh, white proflex for this um, so keep that in mind you don't want to just use regular regular caulk from the hardware store you want to get the correct stuff from an RV place okay so keep that in mind okay so let's go inside we'll do the best we can in here okay so I'm just going to turn this see if I can I might have to set the camera down and let you in here if I can't do it that way. Let's see. We have this. The reason I'm going to I'm going to move, remove this cushion just to show you your uh, off the grid package. Okay. Velcro there. Better to just carry these up to the front, but we're going to be working up there too, so I don't want to just have to move them again. So you just pull up this, this panel here, if you can, okay, get it out of the way, sorry about the camera work, okay, so this is your off the grid system here, so you have um, three solar panels on the roof, right, so you got three panels, you have two, um, Lithium batteries wired together for 12 volt output, so it just doubles the storage. They're wired together to double the storage, not to change the voltage. Um, this is your solar charger controller here. Okay. Um, this is a a inverter. This is a power inverter. Now, inversion is is the opposite of conversion. Inversion is taking 12 volt DC from the batteries and inverting them to 110 AC right so it's changing 12 volt DC to to 110 AC some of the uh, the receptacles will be inverted Let's see what this one says GFCI pro they're all GFCI protected some will be inverted anyway so you can use a small appliance like a uh, uh, an AC blender or something like that or a coffee maker so keep that in mind um, these batteries are charged uh, when you're pulling down the road your tow vehicle will be charging these batteries when you're plugged in your uh, power converter will be charging the batteries and the three solar panels will be always be charging the batteries as it can if you look up here this is where you turn your inverter on and off and this is your battery monitor here okay so you'll have to educate yourself a bit on that it's it's not difficult um, it comes with paperwork but if you go to their website um, I was looking at it the other day they got tons of good stuff tons of videos so um, so this is your power control center here where it's just a few few breakers then you have your converter here so you have 110 AC at these at these uh, breakers right here this is when you're plug plugged into shore power, of course. So these would be just like the circuit breakers you have at home. Then this power, this sends a uh, distribution uh, area here sends uh, AC power throughout the trailer where it's needed, and then it converts the rest of the power to 12 volt DC, right? So these are 12 volt DC fuses here, and they're all labeled. So this is also also senses what kind of or how much energy your batteries needs, and it sends sends. 12 volt DC to your batteries to charge them also so it's a 
AC, it's an AC distribution center, it's an AC to DC converter and a battery charger. This is a, your power, your battery kill switch. You see it's on right now. Um, these are just uh, uh, USB ports. Over here you have your, your typical um, your typical uh, panel here. You have your water pump here. Remember we talked about the water pump. Uh, you use that to pump water out of your fresh water tank if you don't have city water. You also use that water pump to pump the water. Then you can uh, you, have other, you have other tank and line here. here. You have uh, all your battery, your fresh water tank. Only the, if you only have one tank, like just a black tank for example, um, it'll only, the gray tank will, is just, it's a standardized panel, so some of the features will not be used if they're not needed. Okay, your battery's fully charged as you can see. Now this is your um, controller for your, your uh, on-demand water. So you can see, you'll just turn it on here. 122 Fahrenheit, which is good. Then we'll come over here. We're running off of water pump right now, right? Because I put water in the tank. So I can show you this. Then we'll turn on the hot water. You hear the pump kick on. You see it's trying to light here. You can see it lighting. I don't know how well you can see this. There's the flame. And there you have it. So that's, it's now lit. So, um, it's doing its thing. Anytime you turn on a hot water valve, you get hot water. It's kicking it out right now. Okay? Just shut it off. So if you turn on the hot water in the shower, it'll do the same thing. Um, I'll just shut this off for now. So that that's now the, if you don't have a source of water, the gas burner will has a safety, it will not kick on. So if you if you don't have city water hooked up or water in your water tank with the pump on it will not light it will not it, it's got a safety switch in it therefore you can't just run the gas burner without water cooling it down right uh, it's a safety device so you always have to have a water source or it will not light the burner keep that in mind uh, this is of course is a radio AM FM radio it's got a USB drive this is HDMI in it's got Bluetooth uh, two speaker zones um, Zone A and Zone B. A is into tra inside the trailer. B is outside the trailer. So it does everything you need. Your microwave is typical microwave. Okay. Now, the lights are pretty cool. I'll just flip them all on. I'm not going to go through each one inde independently. Okay. So it looks really nice. Very modern looking. The fit and finish is perfect on this thing. You know, if you've owned other travel trailers, you know that's not usually the case. Okay, so this comes up. I'm not, it's held on by magnets, so this top will come off, and you can see the rear end of the of the cooler in there. Just so you know, uh, your refrigerator. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> this has been a long day so far. This television. This is not a refrigerator. It's a television. It's on a scissor bracket, and if you if you pull down on here, it, you can pull it out, right? And I need two hands to put it back in place, but click it back in place when you're not using it, so it doesn't just fly around when you're when you're traveling. Refrigerator. Okay, back to the refrigerator. You not only have the cooler outside, you have this here, which is a refrigerator plus a little freezer. Okay, it runs on 12 volt DC. So the refrigerator, if you have it on going down the road, it'll, the, it'll be running off of the lithium batteries and the lithium batteries will be being charged by the tow vehicle and the solar panels if, if, there's, if, there's, if it's not a cloudy, dark day, right? But it, you can always run it with a, off the tow vehicle's alternator when you're traveling, okay? I only have a half hour before it starts a new file here, so I have to kind of pick up the pace here. This is your uh, European style shower here. Um, you can see your your uh, shower here, the toilet here. The toilet works like all RV toilets in that it's got a flush pedal on it here. You can't use it dry. Dry means using it without chemical and water in it. On it, in it. So it sits right over a black tank. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. 
you come over, you put a dose of chemical right in the bowl, then you'll stand on the pedal, right, like so, and um, hold it down long enough to put at least a gallon of water in there. Um, you want at least a gallon of water plus a dose of chemical. If you don't do that, it'll get clogged up, and it'll also stink really super bad. So you always want uh, a dose of chemical in it and at least a gallon of water in there when you start off, okay? Also a fan up here, of course. All right, so I guess I will do this. This this is the remote for your for your uh, uh, four-speed fan, and it also has a, a an automatic lid on it, so it goes up and down. You can see it like this. Lid's going up. This thing, if you put it on high, it'll just it'll just suck the the warm air right out of here. So to shut it because it's already set up to shut it off. I'll just turn to bring it down. I'll just shut it off. I hope. Yeah, right there. You can see it coming down. Okay, this is your thermostat. The thermostat is is a new model. It's, it's kind of neat. You just push it here, and you get it to mode mode is off right now but if you go to cool that's the air conditioner that's the furnace that's a combo so let's go to air conditioning whoops cool Alaska's fan in this case we're gonna leave it on auto high but you can you can just turn it auto low let me let's, let's go to auto low and uh, then you'll push it again and it's all set now you can set the temperature right here if you want to bring it down to let's say 66 66 degrees push it again so anytime you're setting it, you'll push it. Uh, you'll pick your mode, click it. You'll, if if there's a fan is available, like like with the propane furnace, fan is not available. So um, you won't be able to change that, but you still can uh, push it and then go up and set the temperature. So, okay. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So we'll do this when you when you pick up, but we can pull this panel up here kind of need two people because I'm holding the camera and it just has some valves under there um, you know that you can drain your fresh water tank which is under here you can your your low point valves are here where you can open and close them from there so you can it's got the the uptake hose for the antifreeze when you're winterizing it you do it from under here so all that's done from under there now you may have really studied this or you may know this this already and you might know more than I do about it. I just don't know. So I have to assume that, you know, yeah, you don't just because, you know, that's the only safe way to go with this. But um, so uh, when you get here, you might be able to tell me some things. I'm not sure. But um, that's the basic tour. Uh, like I said, when you get here, you can you can watch the video, look over your trailer, and then uh, we'll talk to you about it, answer any questions we can, and get you on your way, okay? Thank you very much.